We needed a headboard at home, but I know that most people don't have a shop full of expensive tools. So I set out to design and build a king-sized headboard with just simple lumber and basic tools. I didn't even use a table saw. The biggest part of this headboard is a plywood back piece or a base. I cut that out of three quarter inch plywood and I used my homemade track for the circular saw to make straight cuts. I'll have a link to that video down below. The legs are made of dimensional lumber. I use the premium pine you can get at the home center and I cut all of these to length on the miter saw. Then I clamped all of the pieces together for each leg and took them back to the miter saw to trim them up and to make sure they're exactly the same length. The back leg piece and the middle leg piece get glued together and then I added some screws for additional strength. The next step was to glue the plywood base piece to what we've got of the leg assembly so far. At first glance, this might not look like the best way to join a large piece of plywood to some dimensional lumber, but hang on, just stick with me. We're using wood glue, which is extremely strong, and then we're also adding some screws. And then once we put the top part of the leg on, that will make it a very strong piece. Now look at this flawless technique. Now this might be one of the only problems you have with this project, and that is just the cumbersome nature of how big it is. You might need somebody to help you get it up and down. Now that the basic structure of the headboard is done, we need to church it up a little bit. So first, there's a space at the bottom of each leg right below the plywood, and I'm gonna cut some pieces to put here, both as sort of a design feature, but mainly because when we put the top part of that leg on, I don't want there to be space underneath there. And once those are dry, now I can finally cut the top pieces to size. These top pieces get glued as well, but we're not putting in any screws because this is the front face of the headboard and we don't want those screws to show. These premium pine boards were straight when I bought them and brought them to the shop, but after a couple of weeks, this board in particular got a crook in it. I was able to eliminate the crook in this board by arresting him and taking him to jail. I'm sorry, that was terrible. But seriously, if you join the Woodworkers Lab, the link is down below. You'll get all of the step-by-step -step videos for this project, and you'll learn exactly how to take care of a problem like this. The next part is very straightforward. I'm just cutting pieces to fit in between the legs and I'm creating a simple design with three cross pieces and then one stripe down the middle, which is made up of two pieces. And you're not gonna believe this, but I had another crooked board I had to deal with and this was the main piece across the middle. I need to learn how to pick out wood. So what I'm doing now is measuring on the back side where those front pieces are so that I can screw through the back side and they won't show up in the front. This drill has a mute button and I think I might have accidentally hit it before I started drilling these holes. There it is. Now it's back on. 
This part of the project is pretty awkward because I'm trying to reach over the top and hold the front pieces in place while I screw in from the back. So this is another part where you would benefit from having some help. I'm doing this in a two-step process. So I've got the pieces clamped in place and then I'm drilling holes and driving in the screws from the back side, but I'm not permanently attaching these yet. Once I'm done driving all the screws, I can take the clamps off and then mark each piece so that I put it back in the same place. I've left the screws sticking out just a little bit so that I can apply glue to the back of the pieces and then put them back up there. And with those screws sticking out, it's a lot easier to align them and then drive the screws in. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but for the top and the bottom piece, those are really easy to get to with clamps. So I didn't bother putting any screws into the back of those. The last part that I need to make for this headboard before we move on to finishing is the top cap. The top cap is really simple construction. It's just a one by three and a one by four glued together. And I make them flush on one edge and that edge will be the back. I sand the top of the headboard before I put the top cap on just to make sure there's nothing keeping it from laying flat. It turned out to be really awkward gluing this top cap on just because of the way it has to be glued onto the top of the headboard and I had it laying down on its back and it needed to be flush with the back. But in the end, these pipe clamps helped a lot and I was able to get it done. And then it was time to give everything a really good sanding. For the joints, I used just a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a block of wood, and I made sure to sand with the grain so that I didn't scratch across the grain. Anytime you build a piece of furniture that's gonna be sitting on the ground, you wanna make sure you chamfer the edges of the bottom of the feet to keep the grain from pulling out. Installation is really simple for this headboard. You can lean it up against the wall, anchor it to the wall, you could hang it on the wall, or you can attach it to a bed frame. The legs give you a lot of margin for error here, and as long as you check before that your frame was the right size, you should have no trouble lining it up. I use some thick bolts and washers, including a lock washer on each one, and that was plenty to attach the frame to the headboard. You could of course go about any direction you wanted to finishing this headboard. You can paint it, you can stain it, you could try to capture the natural color of the wood. I went with some stain, I put on wood conditioner first let that dry, applied the stain, and then used oil-based polyurethane as the top coat. This build is extremely simple. You might just need somebody to help you lift it, but other than that, it's a very DIY project. Again, if you want the step-by-step -step videos and the downloadable plans for this, check out Woodworkers Lab. We're having a lot of fun in there. There's all kinds of training and projects, and then a community where you can meet woodworkers from all over the world. So check down below for a link to that, and I'll see you on the next one.